All right, welcome everybody. I have a special guest with me, Mr. Ziggy Garcia, who is a local trumpet player here in the Albuquerque area. And, and Ziggy's been here for a while and I have, I have watched and I have listened to him and I thought this would be a really good chance to get to know Ziggy. Really, we've never met in person, have we? No, 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 not yet. Well, not yet. Well, it's a it's a pleasure meeting you, even though it is yeah. virtual. Well, after all this pandemic crap gets all the way through, eventually we're going to do a gig together. I know it. So, yeah, man. so now you're from you're from the El Paso area, and you went to UTEP, which is you know University of Texas at El Paso, and mm -hmm. and you are now living here in the Albuquerque area. What brought you to Albuquerque, and and when did you get here? So in 2014, uh, we're actually here because of my wife, uh, she got recruited, uh, recruited to work at a National Dance Institute. Uh, she was working at a sister company in El Paso and they saw her work and said, hey, you know, would you like to move? And we were looking for something different already. Um, we actually moved to Santa Fe in 2014. She moved out for six months and then I joined her after six months. We were there for a year, um, and then uh, some stuff happened, and we moved back home, and they called her and said, hey, would you like to move to Albuquerque instead? Um, and we were like, yeah, that'd be awesome, because we actually liked Albuquerque. Uh, we, we've been salsa dancers for many years, uh, and we used to make trips up to dance here, uh, and then whenever I would have gigs here with the group that I was playing at, Playing with in El Paso, we would play here at the Cooperage. Uh, rest in peace, Cooperage. Yes, um, yes. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we would come up here and we always had a good time. So we're like, yeah, let's go to Albuquerque. It would be fun. Nice. Well, yeah, Albuquerque is a great town and I'm finding there's a lot more um, musicians here than most people don't. I mean, most people don't realize what kind of Myself a good included. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's true. I am. Thank this you. is why. This is why I'm doing this project because mm -hmm. you know everyone thinks Albuquerque, and they're like, "Yeah, Albuquerque." We have a ton of musicians here, you included, by the way. So, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. So you told me that it was a saxophone player at UTEP that yes. taught you how to breathe properly. So, so what yeah. did you mean by that? Okay, so when I got to UTEP. Dr. Wilkinson uh, was the director and he was, you know, he's woodwind extraordinaire, but, you know, he taught a lot of saxophone. He taught mainly saxophone in the music department and he would hear me play and he'd always, he'd always make, you know, those backhanded, you know, compliment kind of things. Oh, you know, you sound great. If only you knew what, you know, how, how to do what you're doing, you know, things like that. And I would, you know, kind of peak, yeah, it piqued my interest. I was like, well, does that mean I sound good or am I doing something wrong, you know? So, so you know, I, he was really easy to talk to, always super friendly, always super open. His door was always open. So I walked in one day to his office and I said, he's like, so, you know, am I doing something wrong? You know, and, and he said, well, I think you can be more efficient. And that's a word I never heard. I was always used to the competition side of it, like just trying to outdo someone that, was either better than me or as good as me or to like distance myself from other people, you know? Right. Yeah. That higher, louder, faster concept. Yeah, sure. Of course. Right. Uh, so then when he talked about efficiency, I was just like, okay, well, I know what that means, but how does that translate to Trump? And that's just when my mind was like, Oh, he's talking about, there's gotta be an easier way to do what I'm doing. Don't work as hard, but get the same result. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he always talked about Bobby Shue. He always talked about, so I, you know, even in high school, I knew about Bobby Shue um, just because, you know, I was interested in like in lead playing and every lead player who's out there has, has gone through Bobby or learned from him or whatever. And so here we call him Doc. So when Doc was talking about Bobby, I was like, okay, well, there's something to this. Well, he, he was talking to me. He's like, well, you know, you need to look up this thing called the wedge breath, the wedge method. And so I was like, okay, well, what's that? And then, so it turns out, you know, it, it kind of go all the, goes all the way back to like Maynard and like all those guys. Yep. And once I kind of learned it, it was just implementing it. And that was the hardest part. It's just 
being patient with myself. Right. And Doc was always really good about, no, nope, you're going too fast. Slow down, slow down. Because then I would always rely on my face. Right. My face was really strong, you know. Right. Uh, and, and at this time I was doing drum tours. So I was like Iron Man at this time, you know. Um, and so just me learning how to use my air was always paramount for him. He was just always like, okay, well, yeah, you sound great, but why don't you back off the strength and push from a little bit lower, you know, right. or, or bring the shoulders up just at the end of the breath and then, you know, bring them back down before you play. And just those things made my air go faster, which of course right. we all know means higher. Right? Yeah. So that's what, so, so that's what helped you get, such great control in the upper register is is yeah. all the wedge breathing and stuff and and i mean i'm familiar with wedge breathing and i just finished an interview with bobby so you know i'm a lot of people don't understand it and it's extremely tough if you're not if you don't know anything about it you, you really should look it up so that's what helped you get that dexterity and get everything up there and that because you've got a hell of an upper register oh my goodness so you mentioned you mentioned earlier that you marched with the uh, the blue coats, yeah, uh, with drum and bugle corps with the blue coats mm -hmm. out of Canton, Ohio. So yeah. so how long did you do that? And and I assumed you played soprano. I mean, at the yeah. time when you were in it, I mean nowadays everything's three valves, but when I was a kid, it was all two okay. valve and one valve instrument. So, so I'm assuming you played three valve. You played lead trumpet. You played soprano trumpet. Is is that correct? Yeah, so I was actually in that weird transition. I, the, so, well, to answer your question, sorry. I marched in 2000 and 2001 was when okay. I marched, okay? Okay. So we were in that weird transition of, I think we still had two valves, like some of the lower cores that didn't have, in, you know, that much money, they were playing on two valves, sopranos, right, which are in, pitched in G. Right. Um, and we were playing on three valve sopranos but like the cadets and the blue devils i think in 2001 switched to b flat okay so we had this weird kind of like sonority it, it was it was weird but we were seeing that their brass chords were going up like significantly right. so that's that's kind of when i marked so so i think that's what you were alluding to that that kind of like era yeah so what, i'm what old era? pretty much <laughs> no you're not <laughs> trust me you're not old <laughs> so, so so you so what instrument did you play where you were playing g soprano two valve bugle right uh three valve so we we're oh, playing okay. they were called cancel power bores which okay i really liked them but they were really big like the the lead pipe was really big all the all the tubing was big uh so i was having actually a little bit of trouble in the upper register i wasn't playing as well as i did on my b flat um, but it, I mean, it was, it was still enough. I mean, I was still playing pretty well. Um, yeah. I mean, I'll be honest was, with you. I don't know. I mean, I didn't march. I, I'm okay. I did march in high school and I marched in college, <laughs> but you got to remember I was in college in 80, I graduated in 85. So, okay. you know, my band director was from Ohio state. So we were doing high step, you know, That's you cool. know, well, yeah, but it's not the same as drum and bugle chord. Drum and bugle chord <laughs> was just getting started big time yeah, when sure. I was finished with all of that, and and so so now you are heavily involved with Arsenal, which yeah. is the drum and bugle chord that was <clears throat> founded in New Mexico. But yeah. and and you know, not long story short, now you guys are based out of El Paso. Yeah. Um, Honestly, I had no idea that we even had a drum and bugle corps in New Mexico and, and like you said, in, in El Paso. I didn't even know one was close. I thought they were all back East Coast and Midwest. How long, mm -hmm. have, how long have you been involved with that? Are you one of the founding so, fathers? Yeah, so I, I've been, I was actually the second person to know about it. So the, um, the previous director, Spencer, uh, he was thinking about, hey, man, I think, you know, we should start a drum corps. And at this time, I was working at the music store. So I saw him quite a bit, you know, and he came in one day and he said, hey, I heard you're, you're, you're teaching drum corps out there. Because I've taught a couple drum corps as well, uh, previous, uh, prior to Arsenal. Mm -hmm. So we sat down and we talked for about, you know, two, three hours about, okay, well, can we do this? Should we do this? 
how do we do this? So yes, so since it's like inception, since it's conception, I was part of it. Um, and I just never left. You know, there was this, some, some bad stuff happened with DCI. They thought we were trying to, because a couple of cores folded, um, cause, you know, for monetary issues. Mm -hmm. And Spencer was trying to be a good guy, you know, and, and he said, hey, um, you know, if some of those members that aren't marching this year want to come down to Albuquerque and march with us, that'd be great. You know, we, we would love to have you. And I think some people took that the wrong way, you know, kind of like they call it fishing or whatever. Oh, yeah, okay. So, so, so there was quite, we were kind of suspended, I guess, for like a summer, but we still were active. It was, it was kind of weird. Um, so Spencer got upset, left the, you know, left his position. And uh, one of the, the board members picked it up, which is one of the reasons why we're in El Paso now. Uh, okay. Just administration-wise, uh, it makes sense to be down there. Um, we have a lot more support from the community. Uh, as you mentioned, you didn't even know that we had one here. Right. I get that a lot. I get that all the time. And I'm always pushing. I'm always trying to contact, you know, band directors. Like, hey, send me your kids, this and that. And I, I wasn't getting much of a response here. Um, I was working at a couple of schools, and those are the kids that were joining. Okay. And it's funny because, and I'm going to say this, and I'm going to look right at the camera, <laughs> but all those kids that ended up marching with us for maybe 2016 and 17, wherever they went, like they went on to college or they went on to back to their high schools, they were all section leaders, and they were they became drum majors, they became like leaders at their schools. And I don't think that's an accident. You know, I don't they, think so either. They became the, the best players where they were. Uh, I'm not saying we were turning them, you know, into superstars. But, but you know, we definitely made a difference while we well, were and, here. And drum and bugle, well, and Drum and Bugle Corps teaches, it teaches strengths. It teaches how to work together as a team. It's no different. I mean, pe most people don't realize it's no different than being part of a sports team, a football team, no. a soccer team. It's a lot of work. And I have watched my fair share. I'm, I'm not a big, I'm not a big proponent of it because I don't know enough about it. Sure. I, when I was in college, you know, like I said, that was when this all started to become mm -hmm. big. And I went to a couple of competitions just to see what it was. And I tell you what, it's, uh, those kids work their butts off and yeah. it's a lot of work. Oh Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of work. I mean, if you think regular marching band is tough <laughs> and hard, drum and bugle corps in, in, then is tenfold harder. Or do you yeah, disagree? And it, and it, it's a lot more difficult now. Like now these kids have to be actors. They have to be dancers. They have to be, um, you know, performers. Just But my main duty right now is I'm the brass caption head, which means I'm in, I'm in charge of the brass side of the, or the organization, which means uh, I have a staff. Um, I think there's six or seven of us uh, on staff right now. I'm in charge of making sure that the guys and, and ladies that I have working with me have that same vision and have the same like ears that I have. And we need to convey that to the kids and they need to try to convey that to us and the audience. So okay. that's, that's my main thing. Okay. The second thing I do is I am the associate director. This is where Hector laughs um, because <laughs> basically he does everything. Hector's amazing. First of all, he's the, he's the current director. Mm -hmm. uh, so as associate director, I'm like, Hey man, I think we need to, he's like, I did that, man. I did that and it's like, oh, okay, cool. So basically what I do is I'm kind of a, I want to say I'm more of a liaison between him and the other caption heads. So okay. I kind of have to like check in with the visual guys, check in with the um, color guard person, with the drum guy and say, hey, uh, are we having the kids do this uh, between camps? Um, who do we want to contract? Do you, you know, things like that. So I'm okay. kind of like, I want to say liaison because I I'm definitely don't want to manage anybody. So I'm a more of a liaison between the other caption heads and and Hector. 
Okay. So I hope I didn't like burn any bridges there. <laughs> no, I think it. See, well, this is the stuff that people need to know because most, mm -hmm. I said before, I didn't even know it existed. And sure. so for, so if somebody, somebody's watching this and, and they say, well, I want to send my kids to this or we're interested, I yeah. will put a link down below to the webpage and to the Facebook page. Is there... I'm assuming it's something that can still people are if they're interested. It's a summer thing, right? It goes from what May until August. What when can kids get involved? How can they get involved? How can parents? I mean, how can people do this? How can people get involved now? Okay, so so there's a couple of ways. Obviously, you can go to Arsenal Performing Arts. Just Google that; it'll be the first thing that comes up. Um, there, I'll put know, a link down below. Thank you. Yeah. And, and there's a there's definitely a menu that comes out. So if you're interested in marching, just click that link. It doesn't, you know, that doesn't cost anything. Uh, sending us your interest and letting us know where you're from, uh, that, you know, you're maybe interested in marching, doesn't cost anything. So first of all, I would encourage that. And I would, always, I, I, I would also encourage directors to share that link with any kids that may not know about it. Because again, I've heard from so many kids like, oh, I didn't even know we had that. Oh, blah, blah, blah. you know, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, <sighs> okay. <laughs> like without yeah. me going, it, because I know that the directors are busy and I'm not right. going to go to their classes and say, hey, can I steal like 15 minutes of your time? Because I know how precious that time is, you know? Um, so that's one way. Uh, we have a volunteer um link that uh you can definitely click on uh when you go to the performing arts website as well um right now i know staff is full but we're always accepting people and accepting um resumes we've got quite a few actually this during this since i want to say since last year to to this year but there was a whole pandemic thing that happened i don't know if you know about that <laughs> but, <laughs> not at all yeah so a lot of people were let go. A lot of people didn't want to work somewhere for an entire year. So, you know, they're, they're kind of trying to, to hop on. Uh, so that's definitely an option as well. Um, another way uh, you can support us is spread the word. That's okay. really all we need. Okay. Um, we when, is a normal, when does a normal, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but when does yes. a normal season? So if someone okay. were to say, okay, I'm a high school junior and yeah. I'm interested. So when does, when does the normal season run? When do you guys go hot and heavy, so to speak? Yeah. So what we do is we do move-ins. We only do a month long for now. We're, we're, we're trying to do slow and steady wins the race. Um, we're still kind of figuring out our identity of like, do we want to be a big drum corps? Do we want to like, be a small and, and I'll get back to that do we want to be like a smaller drum corps what do we want to do so we figure that we just want to give kids the experience because I come from in 1999 1999 I went out and I tried out for the Blue Devils and I right. didn't make it and I came back and I was dejected and I was just like man I thought it was pretty good you know and then a buddy of mine, shout out Doug Brown, said, hey, why don't we make a tape? Yes, we made tapes back then and send it to the Blue Coats and see if you make it. And then that next season, I ended up marching there. Well, so that's kind of what we want to do. We want to give that experience. So we're only doing a month um, and it ends right before, I want to say it ends the second week of July. So whatever the month is, I'm really bad at calendars. So just imagine whenever your summer bands are, it's a week before that. That's when okay. we're finished. Okay. And we do that because we don't want to step on toes because right. we, we always hear like, oh, well, now my top trumpet player, he's still out doing drum corps and blah, blah, blah. So we're doing short seasons right now. So I would say we, we're, we're going from middle of June to the beginning of July. Um, and we're, we have everything in El Paso right now. We're working with Eastwood High School. Uh, and they're, you know, they're doing a really great job of hosting us every time we have camps and stuff like that. And I assume, I'm assuming that we're, we will be there in the summer. But last year we were at Riverside High School. It was great. I mean, it, it's just, it's a great experience for everybody. Okay. So 
I have a let, let's let, let me let me move on from here because I want to talk sure. about you as a trumpet player. You mm -hmm. are the band director at the Manal mm -hmm. School here in Albuquerque. Yeah. So how long have you been the band director there? So this is only my second semester. Uh, so I'm brand new. Uh, I joined, I want to say, maybe like three, three weeks into school. I don't know what happened with the previous guy, uh, but he got let go. And the, the gentleman who was assisting him uh, thought of me and called. And this was at a point, I'll be totally honest with you, we were one week away from moving back to El Paso. My wife and I were just like, okay, we got to go back. We're, we got to, I don't know what we're going to do. We got to go back. So okay. the phone, the phone rang and it was rusty. And he said, and I didn't even let him talk. I just said, whatever it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I am. And, and anybody, any of my colleagues will tell you that's how I am. And I said, whatever it is. Yes. And he said, are you sure? And I said, yep. He's like, okay, this just opened up. And I said, let's do it. Two days later, I got the job. Nice. Uh, and I, I like it, man. In, in this, this semester, you know, even though we're two days into school, it's already more comfortable than my first one. Because I just didn't, I was trying not to get fired, trying to keep my head above water and give the get kids a great experience. Good. And I think I accomplished that uh, because they, I think I only lost like two kids, but because they had to do you know, to graduate, they had to like take other classes, but yeah. all my kids came back and I have more kids and it's cool. I love it here. I'm glad you're working with them and I'm glad that they have a band. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, and it's really small. I mean, we don't have a big program, but uh, we made some changes and now the band program is a little bit bigger and I'm super grateful to be here. Um, so, you know, I don't know how long I'll be here at Manal, but I like it right now and and it's working with my schedule. I still get to play. I still get to teach. You know, I don't have a marching band here. I don't plan to. Uh, but I still get to, to go out and help out. And I get to do drum corps in the summers. And yeah. so it's that's working, a, man. That's a good balance. So you yeah. play with you play with quite a few bands here in Albuquerque. Yeah. And you're a very in-demand lead player. Um, so so what bands do you play with here in town on a regular basis? So regular basis, I play with Nosotros, um, that we're based out of both Albuquerque and Santa Fe. We do a lot of gigs up in Santa Fe just because um, I think popularity wise and demand wise, we, we have some more up there. Uh, so Nosotros is like my main gig. But other than that, um, I play quite a bit with uh, Darren Cordova and his son, uh, Darren Lee, and his daughter, um, we play, you know, some really great charts. I don't play lead there, which is awesome because the pressure's off. Uh, but but usually, I, yeah, you know, I get hired. You know, I, I fill in for Paul Gonzalez sometimes, which uh, with Baracutanga, with Guy 66. Uh, shh, man, just here and there, you know. That. So let's talk. I'm a gear guy, always have been a sure. gear guy for no mm -hmm. other reason than I, especially when someone plays something different. You play yeah. a very unique mouthpiece and you play a very unique trumpet. So, so talk, pick one. I don't care which one. Start with okay. one and go to the other. But you, th it's very different. Tell me about that. So, so I, I would say that my, my horn is probably the most unique. Uh, part of my gear the the trumpet mouthpiece is actually pretty special i'll talk about that first um i actually play on a hammond design uh, 6s which is one of his stock mouthpieces actually but i i'm really picky about the stuff that i play on hammond was looking for a brand ambassadors which means basically uh, like a kind of like a mouthpiece influencer like you yeah. buy their product, you know, you get their product, you buy their product, and then you kind of post about it. And then you use these like hashtags, and, like hopefully people will be interested. So um, I was like, well, I wonder if I could do that, you know. So, you know, I sent them, you know, a little video and, and uh, you know, they looked at like my numbers on Facebook and my numbers on Instagram. They looked at some, you know, some of my videos and they're like, yeah, we'd love to have you pick a mouthpiece and we'll send it to you for free. 
And I was just like, oh, no. And then one of my buddies contacted me and he said, hey, I played on a, a 6S. It's like a, a 6C, but it's a little shallower. So it's a little shallower. And I'm not good at shallow mouthpieces. The, just, you know, I have bigger lips, so I yeah. bought them out. Yeah. And so I was like, well, 70s are okay. And I've never tried a 6. And then if it's a little shallow, we'll see how it goes. I love the mouthpiece. Okay. Instantly, I was like, oh, okay, I can play everything that I can play, but I can also change my sound if I need to. And so I fell in love with the mouthpiece. And so, so that's what I'm playing. I'm playing on a Hammond Design 6S. Um, now, my trumpet, my wife is super supportive of everything I do. And so I told her, I was like, you know what, baby? I, this trumpet that I have, I got it in 1999 when I graduated. I graduated in 98. And so going into college, my, you know, my dad bought me a trumpet, right? And so I told my wife, I was like, you know, I want to play, sorry, I want to get a new, a new horn. And she's like, okay. And I was like, really? Okay, cool. <laughs> I said, how much is it? And I was like, I don't know how much it is, but I know which one I want. And I had my heart set on, I heard about this guy, Mike Del Quadro, who's out of Las Vegas. And I had my heart set on getting a Del Quadro. I was like, okay, well, there has to be something to this, right? Right. And so I called Mike and we talked for about an hour and a half. And he said, well, what do you want? And I said, I want something with that's commercial, like for lead stuff, salsa, um, solo, like Maynard. If I have to do Maynard stuff, I can do it. And he's like, okay, well, I have, I have a couple things in mind right now. So I was just like, man, okay. So what he did is he actually sent me two horns. Um, and one of them is called the Grande Campana, which has a five and a half inch bell. And then the one that I play on now, which is called the Grizzly, um, has a five inch bell um, and a, a smaller, smaller a lead pipe. So right. they were both considerably, one was bigger and one was smaller. So what I did is I did a Facebook Live and I asked some of my friends, um, teachers out there, or players, whatever. I said, hey, can you guys tune in and just listen to me practice, you know? And everyone was at home, you know, again, that pandemic thing, right? Uh, so everyone was at home. They said, yeah, sure. And so I did like a comparison video and I would say like 95% of the DMs I got, of the comments that I got were like, oh, you got to go with the Grizzly. Like we can hear all the harmonics when you're playing high, when you're playing this. Now, the thing about those horns is, yes, I wanted a commercial sound, but again, it was very flexible. They're super flexible, very, I was like, my sound was very diverse. Like if I wanted to play like dark and fluffy, again, with that Hammond mouthpiece or my, my old mouthpieces, it, it just, I could do whatever I wanted, okay. almost. Almost. These things. Yeah, of course, right? We can't ever yeah. do that. But. Yeah, yeah. Well, if we were perfect, we'd all be making a living touring as a professional musician. That's right. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, okay, yeah. I'm going to have to look that up. I mean, I don't know yeah. much. I really don't know much about those horns. And so I will have to look up. And the mouthpiece I'd be curious about. All right, sure. so let's wrap this up. What do you have coming up besides your teaching every day, which I get? Yeah. Do you have any gigs coming up? Do you have anything uh, in, in the oven? Anything? Um, I want to say February 12th, I'll be playing with uh, Ryan Montano. Whenever Ryan, it seems like, he, he can correct me, but whenever Ryan needs like other horns he or a trumpet, he usually calls me to come in and play because um, he writes a lot of like crazy sick harmonies. And, um, you know, and he'll, him and I, you know, we, we, we get along really well and we play really well together. So um, I'm doing that. Uh, just some shows coming up with nosotros. I mean, you know, if you, if you, you know, want to check out my Facebook or Instagram or whatever, you can do that. I'm always posting when I'm playing. Yep. Uh, but big shows that those two are coming up. And then the summer is obviously, you know, the, the Arsenal, Arsenal right. stuff, which I also post. Uh, I think we're going to come through Albuquerque uh, to play, you know, just because we have some um, alumni here and right. it'd be great to see all them. And, um, but other than that, uh, I'm already booked for Christmas. I, you know, the, the another Christmas gig that I've been playing for like 
I think this was my 11th year that, you know, I play at this, you know, a big church in El Paso. Right. Um, and they, they make sure to book us. They're like, okay, guys, next year. I'm like, okay, cool. You know, uh, hey. great, great, great guys over there. And I get to play with some of the, the local El Paso guys, which, you know, are awesome players as well. Right. Uh, that's what I have right now on the horizon. Uh, just getting these kids to sound good. I have a lot of beginners here, so. That's okay. We appreciate all the work you've done. So, so let's wrap this up. I want to thank yeah. Ziggy very, very much for joining me. I appreciate your sure. time. I appreciate your energy. You. I appreciate all the work you're doing. I will mm. put a bunch of links down in down below and make sure that people understand that Arsenal is out there. And we will look forward to listening to you and seeing you. And I want to thank you very, very much.